let's get the latest from the conference. We now cross to our reporter, Natasha Piri. Natasha, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Of course, a long day ahead for delegates and, of course, reporters. We know that the press briefing was just held a few moments ago just to basically explain what will happen uh, throughout the day in terms of those commissions that will be held. Of course, media are not allowed to be you know, in those sessions. Talk to us about some of the nuggets in terms of the president's speech. Of course, him saying that uh, the party currently is at its most divided, most weakest and most vulnerable state. Indeed, uniting the president actually imploring those ANC delegates uh, to actually come up with solutions uh, in terms of those policy documents of uh, the party. As you know, that this is a deal maker uh, for the ANC, this policy conference. Of course, we also heard alliance partners as well, not holding back and imploring ANC delegates to do what is right in terms of the policies of the ANC. You've correctly said that uh, there was a media briefing uh, shortly, um, a short while while ago, and of course, uh, the ANC's head of policy, Mr. Jeff Radebe, and the ANC national spokesperson, Bule Mabe, just briefing members of the media, but also addressing the elephant in the room, Unaiti, saying that ANC President Sol Ramaphosa did appear before the party's integrity committee, and of course, that meeting has not concluded yet. Uh, he still will go back and present himself before the party's integrity committee. Uh, there was also a national working committee meeting uh, yesterday. Uh, but Unaiti, just to tell me more and to talk more and deliberate especially on, uh, you know, the discussion document of social transformation. I'm joined by Umam Lindi Sulu. Thank you so much uh, for joining us on SABC News, Mrs. Sulu. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much for having me. Can I just please put you on the spot? I mean, as members of the media, we just yeah. heard, um, and the ANC's head of policy confirming that indeed that meeting did take place, where President Sil Ramaphosa presented himself before the Integrity Committee. He still has to go back. And of course, I believe there was an NWC meeting of which you also sit in. I yes. just can tell us about the deliberations of the meeting, what was said about the president presenting himself uh, before the integrity committee, okay. especially on issues of Pala Pala. Um, I don't think we spent as much time on that issue as we should have. Uh, when you consider that this is the head of state and that the integrity of the whole country rests on his shoulders. Um, but we, we were assured that uh, the matter was going to be handled by the Integrity Committee. Uh, I'm hearing for the first time that he did meet the Integrity Committee. Uh, the information we have is that he still has to meet the Integrity Committee and he still has to provide all the necessary information. It's a very complex uh, story that is very unfortunate because uh, uh, as the first citizen of the country, none of those things should be associated with him. Uh, and um, maybe we as the ANC should have taken a different position on this, set each other down and said, look, how do we explain to the world how the first citizen of the country finds himself in this situation? But uh, we all tiptoed around the issue. It's the first time that it has happened. We've had, I don't know how many presidents, we've not had a situation where we've been confronted very directly with a matter of this nature. The one time when we were confronted very directly with a matter of this nature was during uh, uh, Jacob Zuma's time, when um, after he had been appointed in Bulukwane, we still had a case to answer for. So we decided that it is a collective responsibility, having appointed him, to come together and see what the issues are that need to be cleared. Uh, and uh, we worked as a collective. In this particular case, uh, it looks like uh, the lawyers or the president himself wants to deal with it in a personal manner. Unfortunately, it affects all of us because laws have been broken. Uh, the integrity of the ANC is at stake and all of those things. Um, personally, I am still hoping that there will be a com that can be a committee that can deal with this. It takes the load off his shoulders, number one, so he can concentrate on his work. It also indicates we're taking uh, re responsibility for sorting it out for the country and we're able to give the country um, a coherent response at the earliest possibility. The longer it drags on, 
the uglier it becomes, and that's not what we would have wanted. But if uh, Bule Mabi and Jeff Khadeba say that he has appeared before the Integrity Committee, that has not been re reported back to us, nor has the outcome of the Integrity Committee been reported to us. Mr. Sulu, I think the problem with South Africans here in regards to this Palapala Pala issues, remember, it, you know, President Cyril Ramaphosa came in on the ticket of transparency, yes. anti-corruption, yes. and now it seems as if he's not being transparent at all. I mean, every time you ask the president about this issue, he says the law enforcement agencies will be handling it. But what does this do to the brand of the ANC, which seemingly is damaged? I mean, in your discussion poli uh, uh, documents, you say that the ANC will not tolerate corruption but it seems as if the right hand is not doing what the, the left hand is doing well as I said my, my view uh, would have been that we we put together a team that will deal with all of these things so that we're able to respond to the questions such as you're asking me I, I don't know what uh, the integrity committee asked the president I don't know what the president responded to when he talked to, uh, to the integrity committee so I'm not in a position to to say anything about it I am as a um, unfortunately as um, uninformed as you are and it leaves the whole country uninformed and the longer it drags on the um, uglier it gets uh, and uh, perhaps in the discussions that we will have we, we might persuade everybody that let's have a team of people working on this so that we can give a coherent answer to, to uh, the nation and it's possibly also very embarrassing for the president to be confronted with this on a regular basis. Uh, but he, he is the president of the ANC and we all collectively have to make sure that we give answers on behalf of the party and uh, on behalf of the, uh, what, uh, the position that we hold in society. You are the chair of um, the portfolio um, on social transformation. Yes, in light of what actually happened at um, in the Eastern Cape, the Enyobi Tavern, where about 21, um, you know, young children actually lost their lives. Let's yes. talk about the draft bill to ban alcohol advertising. There's a discussion on whether it should be converted to a money bill with a levy to, to fund sports, arts and culture and educational programs. How far is the ANC in terms of that? Well, we've been talking about this for a very long time. Uh, as society um, develops uh, and our moral standards go lower, um, it becomes something that should engage the whole country, not just the ANC. What are we teaching our children at school? Um, and, and you know, what, what role does the community play uh, in the raising of a child? Um, a, a child is not raised by just the mother and father, the, they are pivotal, but raised by a whole community. That is how African people deal with, with, with uh, communities and their children. So what has happened in this case is a reflection on all of us. Uh, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, this rude awakening will provide us with the kind of answers that we need. Um, it is unfortunate that um, we have this level of uh, violence. It is unfortunate that we have um, the level of um, attendance in taverns. Um, maybe we should just um, take several steps back and find out what are we doing to provide our children with recreational facilities. What are we doing to provide our children with alternatives? What are we doing to uh, empower them to feel good about themselves? What are we as a society doing to put a great, the, the greatest attention on children because that is our future? Um, and I don't know if we've gone round to schools to see what they taught at those schools and all of that. Uh, we grew up at a time when we had boarding schools. And I found in them a great asset. We were raised as a community. There wasn't any one child uh, who went hungry. There wasn't one child who went out of the way. Uh, it was a whole group of us. But that system of education seems to have been phased out. And now it is one parent 
are responsible for the one child, the community is very far away, and some parents are genu genuinely really struggling, either financially or struggling with uh, coping with what is happening in the environment. The environment is greater than the parent, in, the parent themselves. So we as South Africans need to come up with a solution for our children. It's not just those children, it's our children, and it is pervasive. It's made worse also by the availability of uh, material on television, social media, which is uh, uh, not regulated. Uh, in our time, some of this, uh, the things that you see now were regulated very strong, strongly. Uh, it's a free society, and free societies have their drawbacks, have their downside. We are experiencing a serious downside to a free society. It's a free society without the necessary balances where somebody comes home to a mother and a father. Some of these children might not have a mother and father. Some of these children might not have the comfort of a, 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 a good meal. Some of these children might not have the comfort of having good um, you know, uh, leaders in their community to lead them. All of us are responsible for all those children. Uh, it's not just the mothers of those children, it's all of us. And we will use this opportunity while we're here to find out where did we go wrong. We all rebelled against our, our parents because we thought they were so strict. But it helped. We managed. And now we're losing young children uh, at an alarming rate in ways that are, are completely unacceptable, in ways that are not part and parcel of the way that uh, we envisage South Africa after democracy. We want a democracy where everybody is free, where everybody goes to bed with food, but where everybody is, has the space to build themselves because the future depends on them building themselves up to be morally upright people, to be uh, the kind of people that uh, we fought for. Um, it, it's a long, long discussion. And uh, now that we're here, we will be continuing with that discussion. Okay, Minister, I wish we had more time uh, yes. to actually engage. I mean, I also wanted to talk to you about the child support grant, where the ANC is proposing that it should be extended from the ages of 18 to 21. But of course, we are camped here the whole weekend as the SABC. We will uh, be giving you rolling coverage of this policy conference. I just spoke to the chair there of the social uh, transformation uh, subcommittee there of the ANC, Umam Lindi Wessusul, and we've been talking about a number of issues, not only these documents, but of course the big elephant in the room, President Sol Ramaphosa presenting himself before the Integrity Committee, and of course he still will do so again. Thank you so much for your time. Unati, we're still camped outside here uh, with my colleagues. I'm not alone. Uh, there's also Ntlantla Khatla, and we'll be giving you all the latest in regards uh, to this National Policy Conference of the ANC.